Hey, what's up guys? My name is Dylan and I'm a cycling coach at Carmichael Training Systems and today we're going to be talking about how sleep affects your cycling performance. I'll go into how sleep affects your training and conversely how training affects your sleep and if athletes are getting enough sleep. I'll also go into sleep disturbances before a big event. Are the pre-race nerves that are keeping you up at night before a big race actually affecting your performance? And finally, at the end, I'll go over some scientifically proven methods that you can use to improve your sleep quality, so be sure to stick around for that. If you're new to this channel, I make training topic videos going over tips and tricks that I've learned in my 12 years of racing experience that have gotten me to the top of the ultra endurance mountain bike game in the US and as a coach at CTS. I also go into the science on your training questions, so if you want to learn how to get faster or just more about sports science in general, be sure to subscribe for more. And if you have a training question, be sure to leave it in the comment section down below. I'll either answer it down there or do some more research and do a whole video about it. All right, let's jump into the science on how sleep affects your cycling performance. But before we do, one thing I'll say is that most of these studies don't use cyclists. Instead, they'll use runners or weightlifters or even basketball players. And that's just because this is the available research we have on how sleep affects athletic performance. And it gives us a pretty good idea of how it'll likely affect your cycling performance. Probably the first thing that athletes think of when they think of sleep is recovery. As cyclists, we're constantly trying to improve our recovery. And one of the main targets is sleep and with good reason. A study on the effect of sleep loss on high intensity exercise and recovery took five subjects and had them perform two trials. In one, they performed 20 minute exercise tests on consecutive days with normal night's sleep between the two, and another with the same two tests but no sleep between them. They found that sleep loss caused the recovery ventilation and oxygen uptake to remain higher than normal during the slow phase of recovery. They concluded that sleep loss negatively affected the recovery process. Even though almost all coaches and athletes will tell you that getting a good night's sleep is one of the most important things that you can do for recovery, there's surprisingly little research on the subject. It's probably something that intuitively we already know when we feel terrible after a bad night's sleep with big miles in our legs. However, there's a lot more research on how sleep affects your performance. In a study on the effects of one night's sleep deprivation on anaerobic performance, they took 13 male subjects and put them through a sleep deprivation condition and a control condition with a normal night's sleep. They tested peak power and 30 second power at 24 hours and 36 hours without sleep. What they found was that performance was unaffected by 24 hours of wakefulness, but had significantly decreased after 36 hours of wakefulness. This conclusion was echoed in another study looking at 24 hours of sleep loss on weightlifting performance. In the study, nine male weightlifters performed a max lifting protocol after a night of no sleep and a night of normal sleep. They found no difference in the amount of weight lifted between the two interventions. However, vigor, fatigue, mood disturbances, and sleepiness were all observed with sleep loss. So it seems that sleep loss affects your mood more than it does your actual performance, which is good news for anyone who struggles to fall asleep the night before a big event. However, there is some research to suggest that 24 hours awake is enough to do damage on your performance. A study on sleep deprivation and endurance treadmill performance took 11 subjects and had them perform two 30-minute treadmill running tests on separate occasions, one after a regular night's sleep and one after no sleep at all. They found that significantly less distance was covered when the subjects were sleep deprived. However, a lot of times lack of sleep is from not getting enough sleep for multiple days in a row rather than staying up all night on just one night. A study looking at the effects of partial sleep deprivation on lifting performance took eight subjects and restricted them to three hours of sleep for three consecutive nights before a weightlifting task and a control where subjects slept normally before lifting. They found that sleeplessness did have a significant effect on maximal leg press and deadlift. So maybe somewhat surprisingly, the research on sleep deprivation's effects on performance is somewhat mixed. Before I started doing research, I definitely would have assumed that the evidence would be pretty clear that it would be detrimental, but that appears not to be the case. Like I said, this is good news for anyone who struggles to fall asleep the night before a race. A study on the effects of natural sleep variation on elite athlete performance concluded that natural variations in sleep affected psychomotor vigilance to a greater extent than athletic performance, and that one night of compromised sleep may not be problematic 
but more severe sleep loss and sleep debt probably is. My take home from this is that you shouldn't worry about a restless night before an event. Yes, you should do everything that you can to ensure you get the best night's sleep possible, but if it doesn't happen, you shouldn't let it stress you out or use it as an excuse on the starting line. That kind of mindset will probably do more damage than the actual sleep loss itself. Okay, so that's sleep deprivation's effects on performance, but what about increased sleep? Will getting more sleep have a positive effect on your performance? A study done on the effects of sleep extension on performance on basketball players took 11 college basketball players and had them perform athletic tests after normal sleep duration and a sleep extension period of five to seven weeks. During this period, the subjects were instructed to get as much sleep as possible with a minimum goal of 10 hours per night. The results were that the subject's sprint times improved after the sleep extension period. Another question is how does exercise affect your sleep? Have you ever had trouble sleeping after a really taxing race or workout? I certainly have and it seems that there's science to back this up. A study on prolonged exercise and sleep disruption took eight endurance athletes and had their sleep electrophysiologically studied after a 15K run, 42K run, and strenuous ultra triathlon. What they found was that sleep was unaffected by the 15K and 42K run, but after the ultra triathlon, subjects experienced increased wakefulness and delayed and decreased REM sleep. I've personally found this to be the case after an ultra endurance event where my body is physically exhausted, yet somehow sleep seems to be a challenge. And it seems that athletes in general have impaired sleep. One study on sleep duration and quality of elite athletes looked at the sleep quality of 47 Olympic athletes and 20 non-athletes. The results were that the athletes performed worse in almost all sleep measures except time asleep, suggesting that athletes experience reduced sleep quality, perhaps related to induced training stress. Another study on the effects of training load and sleep quality in elite cyclists took 28 elite cyclists and measured their sleep during a high volume training phase and a low volume training phase. They found that sleep quality and duration decreased significantly during the high volume phase. However, when asked about their sleep quality, the subjects did not report a difference in the two phases. The study concluded that athletes can be inaccurate when assessing their sleep quality. So that's how sleep affects your cycling and how cycling affects your sleep. Now, what are some proven methods that you can use to improve your sleep quality? In a review on sleep recovery and athletic performance, the authorized summarized these methods nicely, which included maintaining a regular sleep schedule, avoiding alcohol, caffeine, and nicotine, avoiding TV, eating, working, or reading in bed, sleeping in a cool but not cold environment, and staying properly hydrated. Another strategy if you have the time is taking a 30 minute nap. A study looking at the role of a post-lunch nap on cognitive, motor, and sprint performance in partially sleep-deprived participants took 10 participants and tested if a nap after a night of only four hours of sleep would increase their performance. They found that after napping, sprint times improved significantly. Usually if I've gotten a bad night's sleep, I hold off on doing my workout until the afternoon and make sure I get a nap in beforehand. So that's the science on sleep. To do a quick review, the research on sleep's effects on recovery is surprisingly limited. However, the available research does show that sleep loss will negatively affect your recovery. The research on how a sleepless or low quality sleep night will affect your performance is surprisingly mixed. Some studies show that it'll negatively affect your performance and others don't. My takeaway from this is that if you get a bad night's sleep before an event, don't worry about it because it may not even affect your performance and having that negative mindset that you had a bad night's sleep will probably do more damage than the actual sleep loss. Really taxing events like ultra endurance races have been shown to negatively affect sleep quality as well as high volumes of training. So what can we do about it? We can make sure that our sleep hygiene is optimized by using the methods that I just went over. And if you do have a bad night's sleep and you have the opportunity to take a nap, definitely take it because it'll likely increase your performance. I hope you guys found this information helpful and if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend and subscribe for more training tips. If you wanna see more training content, be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you wanna follow my training leading into the season, be sure to check me out on Strava. Finally, if you're looking for a coach, shoot me an email at djohnson at trainwright.com.